Hello everyone, I'm Morgan and today I wanted to talk to you about the six books that I had to read for the booktube prize. Um, so if you don't know like the booktube prize is a prize that has been created like a few years ago and anyone from the community from so booktubers to bookstagrammers to even just uh, readers so who are into the community can participate and become judges so obviously for this year it's too late but if you want you can be a judge also for next year if you're interested and so if you are a judge then you always have like six books to read and you have to rank them just from one to six and the three uh, so top ones of the group move on to the next stage so right now we were at the quarter finals I think um at this point so i had to read like some non-fiction because i said that um i could read either non-fiction or fiction depending on what was available so first i got non-fiction and i had six books to read so i was in non-fiction group b and non-fiction group b so we had to read um so cast by isabel wilkerson Milltown by Kerry Arsenault, Black Spartacus by Sudhir Asarinch, probably. Uh, no Sound of Silence by Lacey Crawford, World of Wonders by Amy uh, Nezuku Mudhail, and uh, After the Last Border by uh, Jessica Gudo. So now I'm going to tell you about all of these books and what I thought of them in the order that um, I enjoy them, so in the order that I put them in in the, my ranking I guess we're actually no so I guess I gave my ranking like a bit before I finished the books uh, because I I felt pretty confident and then in the end like the top three I actually kind of changed my mind about like the ranking but it doesn't really matter because in the end what's important is what you put on the top three so I didn't change it um, but now I'm going to tell you uh, so about these books in the order that I think of them now so the first one is Milltown, uh, Reckoning with What Remains by Carrie Arsenault. <sighs> this one I did not enjoy whatsoever. I didn't even finish it to be honest with you. Um, so this is part memoir, part true crime uh, about so this author's life, so Carrie Arsenault and this town. Uh, there was um, so a mill there. Uh, that was poisoning the town and a lot of people were getting sick because of it but they were um, they kept saying that it didn't come from the mill and people kept getting sick and then they didn't have money and just I mean they were dying out you know <laughs> so uh, it's it's about this and I think how she uh, wanted to do something about it and how she started to talk to people but honestly like <laughs> So she narrates the audiobook and that was the first bad choice that she made. She is such a bad narrator. Honestly, like I, I never thought this before. Like I always love memoirs that are read by the author, but this one, my god, oh no. And I, I'm not alone in thinking this. I, I mean I know it sounds harsh, but oh my god, like no, no, this was so terrible. She has such like a monotone voice and it's like she has no motivation at all. I don't know. Uh, does she even care? I mean, obviously she must, but oh my god, yeah, it was just so bad. And it it was just so boring also, like the story. Uh, like the part that was the most, I don't know, I guess exciting was part of the... Uh, the whole like, conspiracy but she, she tells you most of it in the beginning and then it's all like she just keeps going in different tangents about like her life and and the town where she grew up and it's not that I'm not interested at all but it's like <laughs> this is not what I want to be reading and also like just she she doesn't write well and all I kept thinking was that this is just a proof once again that not everyone should be a writer <laughs> And I mean that sounds so bad, but I, I really do think this. So yeah, I I could not finish this at all. I it almost put me in a slum because I didn't want to be reading it so so bad. So no, this this was so bad. No no no. Uh yeah, don't read this. Uh, then I put so on the fifth place, uh, Black Spartacus, the Epic Life of Toussaint Louverture by Sudhir uh, Hasarinch, and this one. 
it was definitely interesting so it uh, it's a biography of Toussaint Louverture who was a big Haitian revolutionary but he was a lot more than that so um, it really talks about all of his life uh, from growing up a slave to being a free sl uh, I mean yeah, being freed from slavery uh, and then becoming his own man and taking over the um, um, the island of Saint-Domingue and I, I did find it really interesting but um, the problem is the way this is written is extremely dry uh, like this is this really feels like an ad academic uh, book instead of just uh, you know a non-fiction book that would be nice to read uh, but it did teach me like a lot about Toussaint Louverture and I am glad I know about him now uh, so I wouldn't say don't read it but just yeah take your time if you want to do this uh, because it's definitely um, not as interesting as far but once I do did pick it up every time like it was interesting but I never had any drive to pick it up and that was my problem so I, I struggled to finish it uh, but definitely like Toussaint Louverture did so much and he sounds like a such a fascinating person no one ever knew really what he was doing it's like he was always uh, doing things on all sides and just basically he tried to to make life better for everyone right on that uh on that island but especially like for black people so that they wouldn't have to be slaves anymore uh, but at the same time it's like they weren't slaves anymore but they were also working for someone else and not for themselves so no one was happy but he was trying to placate them but also give them freedom and uh and he did a lot for education he he just he thought of so many things honestly like i i don't think anyone was that good of a politician like just ever um yeah he's he's really impressive and i'm i'm so glad that i read about him that i know more uh, because i had never heard of him maybe like once but that's it uh, and that I learned just about the whole Haitian revolution so yeah definitely interesting uh, just not necessarily uh, the written the way I wish it would that's all um, but that's okay then on fourth place I put notes on the silencing by Lacey Crawford uh, so this is a memoir about Lacey Crawford's life and especially uh, her assault so she was sexually assaulted uh, when she was a student in high school was it or something uh, and she was assaulted by two guys who were in the same school and it's like everyone knew about it uh, but no one supported her they called her a slut uh, a lot and so yeah there was like a lot of slut shaming and eventually she did come forward and uh, try to to fight against it but no one would help her pretty much and uh, so it's partly about her assault and just how she reacted to it and how she struggled in the beginning to admit it to anyone and just to admit it to herself so that was like very um, heart-wrenching obviously like hard to read but very I mean <laughs> interesting isn't really the word but it is though um, I, I, I like <laughs> reading about these things uh, I don't know it, it does teach me how I don't know how to react to these things and she she's not saying this obviously like to in book pity or like anything like that uh she just wants to share her story and but in the end like the the more the book goes on the more i mean so it focuses on how uh this school who uh is like very well known in was it North Carolina? No, I don't, I don't remember uh, where in the US but it's a really well-known school like for rich people and um, and they were trying to cover up what happened to her and uh, she just tells the story of how uh, like in many details they try to silence her uh, and so she just wants everyone to know what they did to her and I, I totally support that and that's why like, I am glad that she did write this book and it is becoming bigger and bigger uh, and I guess she hopes that 
it will become like even bigger um so i do want to support what she is doing for sure in this book uh i just yeah it just felt a bit too vindicative like i i totally understand why she would fight for this and i i do hope she um she gets more of a resolution to that story and that they uh like something happens to them and that they, uh, that they get persecuted or something because she she hasn't gotten like closure i guess uh which is so infuriating uh but at the same time it just felt a bit weird like to read this towards the end um and like i i, I lo really like some parts of her writing but not all of it like i feel like the first half of it is like much stronger uh but but i kind of feel weird like criticizing just a book that is uh so personal but yeah still i i gave it like a pretty good rating like it is a, a good book just some things um uh, made me feel a bit weird but that's okay uh, then on third place, I put World of Wonders, In Praise of Fireflies, Whale, Sharks, and Other Astonishments by Amy uh, Nezu Kumaate. So this book is um, so a book of essays about uh, different plants or animals uh, that uh, Amy really loves and she kind of licks them every time to some part of her life or just some experience and it's just yeah it was so relaxing to read about uh like she doesn't always talk about very positive things like she does talk about growing up in this um uh in many different towns actually like in the u.s because she kept like moving and she was uh, one of the only like brown people over there i think she yeah uh she is like her, her mother is Indian or something and so she just talks about growing up um, so as a person of color in some places where everyone was white and of what the kids were like uh, as a kid or just some other things of how she felt and yeah some parts were really raw but overall like it's it's so positive and uh, it's a great message and I love just like to talk about nature and I didn't know about most of these plants and um, and animals so I thought it, overall it was really cute um, just a small note also about like the previous book Notes in the Silencing it's um, what I thought was really interesting about it is that she kept talking about how people didn't really feel sorry for her because she's part of the population which is really rich you know like she is not working class at all um she was in this big school who is like so well known and so when she talks about her life like people don't feel sorry for her because she's so privileged and that part of it i think was um was really interesting like to read about because i had never thought of this um in in that way because it's true that when you think of people going through like sexual assault you um you imagine people who are like helpless and have nothing or something and um and that's not it like a lot sometimes also that can really happen to anyone and um and as soon when you have a lot of privilege and something happens to you then people don't feel the same uh and that was yeah really interesting to hear about her experience and how she felt about it so that's just one thing that i really want to say and then on second place i put a cast of the origin of our discontents by Isola workerson i thought this was so fascinating honestly i had quite a few discussions uh, with some of my friends about it because uh what Isabel workerson does in this book is just fascinating um so in this book she compares the different caste systems of let's see germany the us and india and so in the beginning she just talks about how uh, actual academics never really uh, talked about the us before as a caste system but that um, it really has all the characteristics of a caste system and so all throughout the book she compares uh, nazi germany uh, the US and India but I think 
she does talk about like more the US and Nazi Germany than, than India, but um, depends in parts. And she just really does her argument uh, that uh, the US is a caste system. And she talks about so history of the US, about race uh, and different so things that happen. She she really talks about like so many things like from the lynchings that happened uh to just later on like the small things um she talks about things that happen to other people but she also talks about some of her personal experiences and it's just it's i don't know i knew it was bad like before i mean and even now but i didn't know how much and this just really showed me uh so yeah, kudos to her for that and just I just learned so much honestly and also like just the writing is so amazing in this book like from the beginning you know that she knows what she is doing and it's it's so wonderful like to have this feeling like, from the beginning of a book when you know that the author is not knows what they're doing uh so for that like I highly recommend it and just yeah the whole argument that she makes and in the end um so she's not saying all of this to make you make anyone feel bad like she is hopeful for the future and uh, she does talk about how people are slowly um, starting to have a conscience I guess and to come to themselves but not everyone and um, she yeah she talks about like recent times actually and how uh, people felt I, I never knew actually how much people disliked Obama when he was elected like I, I knew there was racism in the US but I, I yeah I never realized how much and I, I keep getting shocked actually a little bit about it but overall still so interesting and yeah I, I highly highly recommend this book uh, so that was fascinating and then uh, the first book uh, the one that I put so in the first place was After the Last Border, uh, Two Families and the Story of Refuge in America by Jessica Gudo. So um, this one totally caught me by surprise. So it partly relates the lives of different refugees who have come to the US. Uh, so from basically not from their how when they were born but almost like part of their life in their home country uh, to when they came to the US but it also relates to the history of immigration in the US and so again I, I learned so many things in this book and I just cared so much about these two, two women that she um, talks about and they have completely different lives so one comes from Myanmar if I remember correctly uh, but originally I think comes from another country in Asia and she has always lived in refugee camps so she has never really had money or anything like that um, so it's it's like one part of her experience and um, and so even her mother is uh, I think died in a refugee camp and she lived all of her life in a re refugee camp almost and she got married to a man also in that camp and they both immigrated to the US and so it talks about their lives like trying to immigrate my battery died so here we are an hour later about <laughs> uh, so I was talking about the after the last border so as I said so we follow two different women uh, who have like very different lives and so one has always like been in refugee camps and he has taken her years to get to the US whereas like the other one never actually wanted to leave her country like she lived in Syria and uh, she was from a um, pretty well-to-do like family I mean sh they were like working class I think but still um, pretty good standing overall and uh, they really loved their country they had a beautiful house and everything but with everything that happened so in their country they had to leave it just follows a lot of their lives so I um, mean obviously like the specific women that we follow but also just all of their family all around because they're not um, alone at all and yeah it was just so touching and I learned a lot about Syria and uh, Myanmar and just how long actually it takes to apply to be a refugee and just uh, the, yeah just the whole process I, I never imagined it could take that long because like 
with how hard these countries have it i would think that uh, it should be like faster uh, because it, you know like they should get out um as fast as possible but that's not what happens it takes literally years and i was so surprised and yeah i don't know like uh so the parts that followed these two women were written in a very uh, narrative style so it was really like narrative nonfiction, and then you had those parts that uh, went over the history of like refugee law basically and just overall like immigrants um, law and history in the US and I learned a lot about those and how like originally in the US um, like it used to be actually a pretty open country like it has somehow gotten worse since then like there was one um specific president who made it so much easier for everyone to emigrate and then like right after there was one other who was uh, a republican who just like completely destroyed things and i think and it was like years and years ago and i had no idea uh how much it had changed and and it just reinforced more and more like racism and yeah just this book um it really made me th see things like in a different way because i was like i knew nothing about refugees almost and you always think at least for me in western countries that people who are refugees like they it's not like they wanted to be refugees obviously they don't want they didn't want their country to like go crazy or whatever go into war uh but that they're happy like in other countries and they're at least happier and um and that they would want to go somewhere else but that's not it at all obviously like they were actually very happy and i just i i never imagined yet yeah, those countries as as places that were so great to live because i i know nothing about them and that's actually what they were saying especially like about syria how nowadays like the only reason we have heard about syria is because of the wars that have been going on there but actually like she kept saying how it was just such a beautiful place and um but that all of those memories that she has like just don't exist anymore because i mean those places don't exist memories do um and so yeah it was just so heartfelt and beautiful and uh yeah it, it totally took me by surprise and i think it's like almost a perfect book and towards the end so there's an author's note and she just um talks about the twist that she made how like the the uh, the parts so recounting the lives of these two women are written in a third person and why she chose that because obviously it's not it's not her story so she didn't want to pretend that it was um and i liked how she like justified it and just everything you can see how she just yeah it's just she really thought it out and it's um it's a really good book and i think yeah um i was so surprised i don't know um i had i have not heard about this at all it has just a few ratings uh, i mean just a few like more than a thousand but still not a lot of, uh, so i would highly encourage you to read it if you're interested like it's yeah it's so fascinating um uh, so yeah that was kind of my winner but um actually the the rating that i gave so for uh the for the prize was uh just that i put case i think first or something or maybe world of wonder is that i don't remember like one of i think yeah i put world of wonders first then case then after the last board no or, no i put world of wonders first then after the last border then case that's all <laughs> but whatever um in the end two out of three made it uh so cast made it and after the last border and notes on the silencing so i wasn't mad at all like it is a good book um so yeah that was that and now i have another batch of books to read uh for the next round so of fiction books uh, so i think it's like the group b again so yeah i am getting to that um now and actually it's like kind of a lot i have like um, the mirror and the light to read by um what is her name whoever wrote that book anyway the wolf hall series and thomas cromwell no it's called thomas cromwell trilogy and thank god like i've already read the first book so that's okay but uh and i'm reading the second one now almost finished 
But so the third one, the one that is nominated, is like more than 800 pages. And I'm going to listen to the audiobook, but I saw like it's 38 hours long. So wish me luck uh, for this. But I, I love that series, so it's good at least like I'm getting to it faster than um, than I would have otherwise. <laughs> but it's a, it's a big thing. But I'm excited so to, though to be a judge. Like it was really fun for the nonfiction part. I read like a lot of good books and uh, especially after the last board that I would never have read, I think. Uh, so I'm, I'm so happy to be part of this. And yeah, that's all I had to say for today. Um, please always like tell me if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. Or if you want to read them now, and that's all I have to say. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in another video. Goodbye. Dream I know, deep up my feelings feel